ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय आई ऑफर माय हंबल ओबेसेंस अनटू द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड वासुदेव नारायणम नमस्कृत्यम नरम चैव नरोत्तमम देवीम सरस्वतीम व्यासं ततो जयम मुदीरयेत before reciting shriman bhagavatam which is the very means of conquest one should offer respectful obeisances unto the supreme personality of godhead narayana unto nanayan rishi the supermost human being unto mother saraswati the goddess of learning and unto shlavyas dev the author of shriman bhagavatam nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर भवती नैष्ट की बाय रेगुलर अटेंडेंस इन द क्लासेस ऑन श्रीमद् भागवतम एंड बाय रेंडरिंग सर्विस अनटू द प्योर डिवोटी ऑल दैट इज ट्रबलसम टू द हार्ट इज ऑलमोस्ट कंप्लीटली डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड लविंग सर्विस अनटू द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हु इज प्रेज विद ट्रांसेंडेंटल सॉन्ग्स इज एस्टैब्लिश्ड एज एन इररेवोकेबल फैक्ट गुरुवे गौरचंद्राए राधिकाय तदालये कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नमः हरे कृष्ण डियर वैष्णवस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग वी आर रीडिंग कैंटो सेवन चैप्टर फाइव श्रीमद् भागवतम प्रहलाद महाराज द सेंटली सन ऑफ हिरण्य कश्यपू so we read till text number 49 yesterday and we were discussing that how hiranya kashipu tried uh really extraordinary ways to kill his son prahlad and when he could not do so he was in great distress great deep chinta long distress why because he was thinking my son would later kill me and later he would remember all the bad things i have done towards him in so much attempt uh, so many attempts i have made to kill him and he's so powerful unlimited strength he would surely kill me later so that was the cause of worry but later shanana mark said no 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 what is it was just merely a child what can he do he'll forget you know we don't take children's bad words or good words very seriously so just forget it you are great you your eyebrows you know when you move everyone falls at your feet so let's see what happens next text number 50 imam tu pasher varunasya badva nidhe vibhito न पलायते यथा बुद्धिश्चापुंसो वयसार्यसेवया यावद् गुरुर् भार्गव आगमिष्यति ट्रांसलेशन बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति दंत स्वामी प्रभुपाद श्री प्रभुपाद की जय अंटिल द रिटर्न ऑफ आवर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर शुक्राचार्य अरेस्ट द चाइल्ड विद द रोप्स ऑफ वरुणा so that he will not flee in fear fear in any case by the time he is somewhat grown up and has assimilated our instructions or served our spiritual master he will change in his intelligence thus there need be no cause for anxiety so what are shan and amarkar speaking this to hiranyakashipu trying to pacify him console him don't worry don't be in anxiety let's they are having proposing a plan what's the plan let's arrest him with ropes so that he does not flee but did he try to flee before when he, so many attempts were made no the words used were he was sitting silently in complete absorption he never tried to flee he was had complete absorption but demonic people think like that as we were discussing the world is a reflection of our own consciousness so if someone um, you know he was trying to put prahlad in their own consciousness because someone is in fear they will certainly flee or try to flee so they are proposing this that until our father shukracharya comes and when he will serve our spiritual master his intelligence will change serving the spiritual master is good but that spiritual master has to be the great mahaj and we had read it that in text number 32 i believe mahat pada pad rajo bishekam that when one serves the dust of the the spiritual master by following the instructions that leads to bhakti but when one serves an impure guru that 
or, or tries to follow an impure guru uh, who is just a so-called guru, a so-called Brahmana, a so-called Vaishnava, then nothing will happen. Anxiety will increase and therefore all of them were in great anxiety. Shanda, Amarka, Hiranyaka, Shippu, all falling. Uh, an impure guru, you can say, or a bogus guru, and Prahlad Maharaj falling, the true guru, in spite of all the obstacles and, and difficult situation, he was in bliss. So, any other comments or questions? Okay, let's read the next verse. Devotees who didn't get a chance to read yesterday would like to read, please. Hey, Krishna Prabhu, then that's I can read. Please accept my humble obeisances. Text 51. Tatheti Guru Putrokta Manu Kyayeta Ma Brabit Dharmor Rasyo Pade Rashtavyo Radhyam Yogruhame Adhinam. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace is the Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Shri Prabhupada Kija. After hearing these instructions of Shanda and Amarka, the sons of his spiritual master, Hirane Kashyapu agreed and requested them to instruct Prahlad in that system of occupational duty which is followed by royal householder families. Purport Hirane Kashyapu wanted Prahlad Maharaj to be trained as a diplomatic king in ruling the kingdom, the country or the world, but not to be advised about renunciation or the renounced order of life. The word dharma here does not refer to some religious faith. As clearly stated, dharmohi asyopa de shtayo shabyo rajam yao griha medhinam. There are two king kinds of royal families. One whose members are simply attached to householder life, household life and the other consisting of rajashis, kings who govern with ruling power but are as good as great saints. Prahlad Maharaja wanted to become a Rajarshi, he, whereas Hilarne Kashyapu wanted him to become a king, attached to the sense of enjoyment, Griha Medhinam. Therefore, in the Aryan system, there is Varnashrama Dharma, by which everyone should be educated according to his position in society's division of Varna, Brahman, uh, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and Ashrama, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Manaprastha, and Sanyas. A devotee purified by devotional service is always in the transcendental position above the mundane qualities. Thus, the difference between Prahlad Maharaja and Hiranyakashipu was that Hiranyakashipu wanted to be, keep Pralada in mundane attachment whereas Pralada was above the modes of material nature. As long as one is under the control of material nature, his occupational duty is different from that of a person not under such control. One's real dharma or occupational duty is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. As described in his order carriers by Dharmaraj or Yamaraj, a living being is a spiritual identity. And therefore, his occupational duty is also spiritual. The real dharma is that which is advised in Bhagavad Gita. Sarva dharman parityaja mamekam sharanam braja. One must give up one's material occupational duties just as one must give up his material body. Whatever one's occupational duty, even according to the Varnashram dharma, one must give it up, engage in one's spiritual function. One's real dharma or occupational duty is explained by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jivara Sarupahoy in Krishna Nityadas. Every living being is an internal, eternal servant of Krishna. That is one's real occupational duty. So Prabhu, that was a long purport. I'll give you back quickly. Hare Krishna devotees under pranam. So Prabhupada is wonderfully describing this. Basically, Hiranyakashipu is Guruha Medhi. Uh, you know, he's, he's into dwelling into the uh, Andhakupam, the deep dark well uh, of civilization. So his concept of king is not Rajarshi, which is saintly king, the king as good as the saint, the king who 
embodies all the qual qualities of demigod. So, so he represents dharma. He represents, uh, and we read so many examples. Examples uh, previously, Prithu Maharaj, uh, Priyavrata Maharaj, so many different kings in the Manu, uh, Manu's uh, child. The whole cantos they were followed by one example after another. Even Bharat Maharaj was such a great king. But uh, this is an example of demonia king, Hiranyakashipu. He wants to be um, Amar. He wants to be the immortal. But then he, do he doesn't even like, he doesn't know what to do. He wants to control the entire world. But he doesn't even have a slightest clue what to do when his small child does not, does not praise him or praises Vishnu instead of him or thinks about Vishnu. He doesn't even know how to control his own mind uh, when these such things happen. And he's, he, all his attempts, uh, bringing the Gajapati, big, big Gajas and uh, biggest snakes, and still the child is alive. And uh, he just um, amazed and startled and stumbled upon such a situation. Prabhupada, he writes very nicely about a de devotee purified by devotional service is always in the transcendental position above the mundane qualities. So such devotee is even better than Hiranyakashipu, who is uh, the Tapasya for 10,000 um, uh, for 100 celestial years. And Prabhupada is saying Prahlad Maharaj and Hiranyakashipu are different because uh, you know Prahlad doesn't have mundane attachments and he he knows how to con he is the uh, Hiranyakashipu doesn't know how to control material nature, but Prahlad really knows because he knows the real purpose of dharma. Dharma to sakshat bhagavat pranito. It's not pseudo religion that Hiranyakashipu wants to follow. Prahlad wants to follow uh, Lord Chaitanya's guidelines, which is uh, what Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya has specified again and again. Jivera nitya rupa Krishna ra nitya. Jivera uh, Sarupa Krishna Ranitta Dasa. So we, we are our only pleasure, our only um, eternal duty, our dharma, our lifestyle, everything. If we are only happy, only happy if we can serve Krishna and if we see every opportunity to serve Krishna instead of serving the bogus mind. Back to you, Prabhu. Thank you very much and happy Mother's Day to everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. So nicely you mentioned so many points. And today being the occasion of Mother's Day, uh, first of all, I really, all the mothers who are hearing this are present, um, really from the core of my heart, I wish a very happy Mother's Day so that we can um, value the contribution of the great mothers and the sacrifice, the love and so much selfless service they do towards the children. And this verse actually, you know, there is, you can talk about that the parents and even in the parents, the mother has a very specific and more important role. And what is that role to give real to teach the real duty. The parents should not be like Hiranyakashipu. They just give material education, which is he's trying to do. Tell him about politics, tell him about the royal household. So in, in modern tech context, it will tell him about chemistry, tell him about physics, tell him about math, so he can be a great engineer or a great professor or a great lawyer or a doctor. That is actually not a very healthy mentality. We are not saying that don't do that, but more important is the spiritual duty as parents, as uh, mothers or fathers. Mothers have more important role because the child is always more connected to the mother because in the traditional model, nowadays it's a little different, but in the traditional model, the mother would be spending more time with the child. So mother has a very important duty and that must be, and I was just hearing today morning in a class by Zulunath Bhakti, Samrit Swami Maharaj, that often we undermine the contribution of the mother or the parents. Um, mother has, 
how are great sanyasis born from their mothers how are the great grihasthas born from their mother how are the great brahmacharis born from their mother or great so mother is the the cause or the ultimate cause is krishna but still the mother has so much important role uh, everyone is born from mother only and great you know people have great mothers that's very very often the case actually often we will see that because from the very very early childhood they teach the mother teaches so many uh, principles spiritual education it is not just that the as as you may hear i have shared a link by sarvana sadana swami maharaj the value of the mother or the contribution of the mother very very important often we feel our oh, mother's job is just to clean the home and just to cook some meals that is a very tiny portion of what she does the mother does a lot more a lot more which cannot be even expressed in words um, how did the great shivaji become great shivaji because of a great mother every day she would read those stories of brave um, you no know, leaders from mahabharata from ramayana so uh, today is mother's day uh, we must value the contribution and not just think um, that they are just uh, providing meal or cleaning the home they have a much much more important role and parents um, so we must support we must help we must encourage and we must value and maharaj said even in the spiritual life we don't uh, we often undermine that which is not healthy two kinds of royal people two kinds of household people grihastha and grihamedi one's focus is sense enjoyment the other's focus is krishna's enjoyment you know like the rajrishi would also have a kingdom the rajrishi would also have wealth the rajrishi would also have military phalanges or queens etc the children externally they would appear to be the same and so does we can say in the modern times agrihasta and agrihamedi may externally appear same they will also wear clothes they would also wear clothes they will also have a home they may also have a home rented or owned that's a different story they will also have a car both may have a car both may have a job or business uh, but what is the difference then the difference is what are we using it for the home the car the job the family grihamedi is using for being bound to get bound more and more in the the web of material energy sense enjoyment that is the focus but grihastha ashram means he has taken ashray prabhupad writes an ashram is a place where krishna consciousness is always foremost that is ashram is it for this grihastha ashram so ex- that is the focus for the the grihastha and then the material duties also become spiritual because when he is using them for krishna's service and that is what it is really meant for otherwise we will get more and more bound any other comments or questions or if you go so as you mentioned that mother's role as to raise krishna conscious children so i remember one quote from propado he is telling that mother's role to raise krishna conscious children is more important than deity worship so at that period mother even can have a deity worship if they don't get time but most important thing to raise the krishna conscious children thank you bhai ji thank you thank you so much maharaj mentioned today is morning talk uh, an ounce of mother is more than a pound of clergy that means what the child is learning from the mother even an iota of that is more powerful than um, you know other ways of learning so that doesn't mean we don't take our children to you know temple or spiritual association 
but today the glorification is of the mother. So Juan Prabhu has a question. Let me quickly read. Um, so, whatever one's occupational duty, even according to the Varna Ashrama system, one must give it up and engage in one's spiritual function. How can one maintain real perspective of one's spiritual function while one is submerged in work life, which can sometimes be overwhelming? In other words, how can one maintain balance in maintaining the body and following the spiritual life? Okay, whatever one's occupational duty, even according to the Varna Ashrama. Okay, same question. I did get your question, Prabhu, so it's working. So, yeah, very good question. Uh, when Prabhupada is saying that one should give up the material duty, uh, it is basically in the consciousness. So, as I mentioned before, uh, a living being is spiritual by nature, spiritual identity. Therefore, his occupational duty is also spiritual. That means... Uh, a grihastha, as I mentioned, the difference in grihastha and grihamedi, both are going to job, and there it is. They are supposed to go to job, uh, or or some form of livelihood, balanced way, not like working for or 14 hours, 18 hours, and having no time for spiritual life. That's not encouraged, or no time for bhagavatam, no time for chanting. That's that's not encouraged. Uh, uh, atya, what what is it called? What is the I forgot the Sanskrit word. Ati Prayasascha. Mm -hmm. Yes, Atyahara is overeating and Prayasascha is over endeavoring. Yes. So, over endeavoring for material life is not good because it is fixed. Whatever um, wealth, name, fame, whenever birth, which country, the looks, this all, most 99% of the things are fixed. So we have to do our dutiful endeavor. And always keeping in mind that why are why am I doing? Why am I going to job? Is it I'm going to job so that I can, you know, go to the next uh, movie or or enjoy my life in, in various forms of material pleasures? So I can earn more and then save more and then go for better vacations and Hawaii and this and that and enjoy. Uh, you know, new food, new drugs, new alcohol. So, that's what non-devotees do. But devotees, they work, firstly, and they use it for Krishna consciousness. So, keeping it my, uh, you know, let's say, to pay the rent of the home or the mortgage, oh, it's Krishna's temple. So, I have to maintain it so that uh, I can... Uh, do my bhaktis nicely and invite devotees to the home to serve them and take care of the family in a Krishna conscious way by giving them spiritual education is more important than material education as today's discussion and uh, of course even to the, go to the temple we need some form of you know transport or even to go for yatras we need some some you know Lakshmi so that is how we can maintain balance Thinking that it is not for my, and I am speaking, you know, I have seen, I mean, I don't want to embarrass by taking names on, of devotees on this call, but I, you know, there are a lot of devotees present on this call who use their pretty much everything in Krishna's service. Um, and so much inspiration I derive from them. So much. So, does that answer your question? Let's read the Prabhu. next verse. Yes, Prabhu, Prabhu please add. Can you please uh, uh, explain more about the material education and spiritual education? Material education and spiritual education. Yes, Prabhu, that's, uh, you are so uh, giving me chance to speak. Uh, you are so kind. You are asking me, well, you are living by it actually. Uh, Material education, spiritual education, which is more important? Again, we are, we are not at that level that we, are, we have to understand where we are living. If someone is living in, you know, or someone has pursued to, you know, go to uh, Gurukul in Mayapur, 
or someone has children of that age that is very healthy and nice but there is always good better best if one cannot do that then we have to live in this world and we have to deal with the matter by living in this world and we have to deal with the matter for example if the car is flat tire it is material we have to deal with it by going to the mechanic and getting that fix so similarly we are in this material world so and we are not i am not pure devotee so we have to certainly get our children educated or get ourselves educated based on the inclinations not just forcing our thoughts on them um and it is it is a very big topic actually as i said there is always a good better best how what and the parents know the inclination of the children the best like earlier everyone was living in gurukul ashram and the guru would teach them based on the inclination of the children now i think that role the mother should take and part of it the father they must take it everyone should not be just treated you know in schools and colleges everyone is treated the same you have to do this and um, um, so therefore we are we are very very far from the vedic system so uh, just to sum up and not to continue you know lengthening upon this that based on one situation one must take material education but always keeping the focus that it is to serve i i should get good grades my mentor when i was in college i was an average student my cgpa was you know 7 7.5 which is not like bad bad and not good good either so it is like kind of an average but then he told me you know you are here now you are coming to iskon people are seeing you are coming to iskon if you get average grades then people will say you know don't go to iskon see that's why he is you know getting bad grades and stuff like that so after that because of his belief in me and his support his encouragement he didn't give my exams but he helped me to understand in the right perspective and by krishna's mercy and by his prayers uh, i always got like 9.5 plus out of 10 10 9.7 9.8 10 and the average became really high and i you know i felt so good inside because i was you know and that, that's how we can try to feel that this is my work my 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 material education is a service to krishna so i must do it nicely because people are people link very fast and they said that you know sanyasera alpa shidra sarva loka gai so vaish it can also be linked to vaishnavera alpa shidra sarva loka gai little problem everyone say oh that devotee is like this we will forget about the 99 good that one alpa chhidra everyone will say so we have to be role models and try our best and it's a very big question based on one specifics but this is my general thought and of course spiritual education is the education and that must be continued from the very beginning one senior mata ji said till 5 years everything should be completely spiritual till 5 years nothing else is required of course some may want to follow some will say no this is too fanatic again this is always good but you want to take it that's fine you want so that means till 5 years even a b c d you can give in a spiritual way this is from i think her this urmila mata she said this was very uh, accomplished mother devotee and very senior person in our society and later we, we give them in a balanced way and and spiritual education should never be compromised in the sense there should be some some time always set for spiritual education every day like how we are reading bhagavad gita we are going to our jobs business or some who are going to college you want to add prabhu so anyone wants to say yes thank you very much yes please share you are you are more realized bro think uh, what i learned from you i mean uh, that i i uh, that i think a lot of devotees here 
uh, that you said one plus one is two. Uh, that is uh, like starting from the uh, very beginning that we are the soul, spirit soul, as Prabhupada is mentioning here, spiritual identity. And then it, as you said before, that if one plus one becomes three, then everything, all the equations are mistaken. I think that was we are lacking in our current situation. Nowhere is talking about the soul. And, and as Prabhupada mentioned so many times, when soul comes to a relationship with the soul, with the supreme soul, I think, uh, and then all the dualities, as Prahlad Maharaj was saying before, that uh, he doesn't consider anybody enemy or a friend. Then all these things, as you mentioned just a few minutes before, that if 99% fixed, uh, whatever, how much we are going to have fame, how much we are going to have money, everything is fixed. So uh, that's dual, that, so duality. So we, we see that in current situation, uh, there is a duality of everything. Uh, this is good, this is not good, this is bad, but this is our friend, this is our enemy, it's teaching. So, but thank you very much, for Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's read the next verse. Would someone like to read, please? Let's not read. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I can read. Please. Dandavat Pranam to everyone. Text number 52. Dharma artham cha kamam cha nitara pavana purvashah Pralada yo cha tu rajan pravishthavanata ya cha Translation and purpose by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada T.J. Translation Thereafter Shandha and Amarka systematically and unpleasingly taught Pralad Maharaja who was very submissive and humble about mundane religion, economic development, and sin gratification. Purport. There are four processes of human society, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. And this cumulative in liberation, human society must follow the process of religion to advance, and on the basis of religion, one should try to develop his economic condition so that he can fulfill his needs for sense gratification. Okay, then liberation from material bondage will be easier to attain. That is the Vedic process. When one is above the stages of dharma, artha, kama and moksha, one becomes a devotee. He, he is then on the platform from which he is guaranteed not to fall again to material existence. Yad Gatvana Nivartante. As advised in Bhagavad Gita, if one transcends these four processes and is actually liberated, once engaged in devotional service, then he guaranteed not to fall in material existence again. So here in the purport, Prabhupada is saying that uh, Shantra and Amarka uh, taught Prahlad Maharaja about uh, mundane religion and economic development and sense gratification uh, to Maharaj Prahlada, who was very submissive and humble. So that was the one best quality uh, he, he is having to receive the good knowledge, but uh, Shanta and Amarka was giving him the mundane uh, religion and economic development knowledge. Although he was uh, learning this uh, at the early uh, age of his childhood from mother, from the Narada Muni. So he has both the teacher, but he has the uh, quality to get the good knowledge. And in further, in the purport, Prabhupada is saying that one uh, human being who is for above the stage of dharma, artha, kama and moksha, he can become a good devotee. And uh, when he go out on that platform, and on that platform, he is guaranteed to not fall down in material existence. 
and that's what uh, krishna explained in the bhagavad gita that yagatvana nivartante tadhamam paramamam means if you follow this process and uh, become a good devotee or engage yourself in all the activity of lord hari you will get uh liberation when you go to his uh, dhama and uh, that's what uh, we need to follow as per the prabhu paji's instruction and in the uh, good association of the devotee we can uh, progress in our devotional service uh, back to you prabhu thank you Thank you so much, Mataji. Just imagine ourselves in Prahlad Maharaj's situation. Extraordinary attempts have been made to kill him. Still, he is humble and submissive. Isn't that a wonderful quality? A materially conditioned person, what he will think? Well, you are the ones who are trying to kill me and you want your teaching me. but he is still so humble still submissive they are thinking he'll run they are thinking he'll try to kill but he that is in his natural position this is his humility his simplicity his surrender his submissiveness so now they are t- again trying now this is like the second third time the gurus are trying to teach him again what is the real thing which is real according to them but not real according to the vaishnava dharma the real thing according to vaishnava dharma is is bhakti prema pumartho maha the topmost in the material world practically everyone you know is focused around two things artha and kama there is hardly any dharma left and moksha also is pretty much even less than that very hardly any issue one trying to even uh, attempt for moksha even in that there is like five types of moksha most uh, some of them are just focus on the impersonal liberation but what we have received by the mercy of lord chaitanya and shri prabhupada is the topmost the prema pumartho mahan uh, the highest purushartha the pancham purushartha and bhagavatam is also said to be the pancham veda which is talks about the highest thing which is transcendental and uh, today being mother's day we keep taking birth in so many mothers womb but when one takes shelter of lord krishna then there is no more birth and i was reading that book uh, parikrama the vraja parikrama no, we are all doing parikrama where parikrama means you know moving around circumambulating in the material world in the wombs of different mothers in the wombs of different mothers uh, in different species of life in different planets or different planetary systems in different material universes but when one does the parikrama of the supreme lord the temple at the vrindavan dham uh, or does the process of bhakti then there is no more parikrama in this material world because that person goes to yad gatvana nivartante back home back to god and no more parikrama in the material world so by doing parikrama of the holy places no more parikrama of the material world very nice i like that so when is guys whether prabhu every year he organizes such rajmandal parikrama and govardhan and the holy vrindavan dham and amazing thousands of devotees go every year and prabhu ji organizes so nicely okay anyone else has any other comments or questions Let's read the next one, fifty-three. Yes, Prabir Prabhu, you want to read? Okay, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hari Krishna devotees, Dandavat Pranam, Jai Shri Lal Prabhu. Text fifty-three. Jatha Trivargam Guru Bhi Atmane Upashikshitam Na Sadhu Me Neta Chiksham Danda. दंड आरम उपा वर्णितम ट्रांसलेशन एंड पार्पोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति व्यंत समिश्रुपपत जॉयशिलपपत ट्रांसलेशन 
The teachers Sanda and Amarka instructed Prahlad Maharaj in the three kinds of material advancement called religion, economic development, and sense gratification. Sure. Prahlad Harbor, being situated above such instructions, did not like them, for such instructions are based on the duality of worldly affairs, which involve one in a materialistic way of life marked by birth, death, old age, and disease. Purple. The entire world is interested in the materialistic way of life. Indeed, practically 99.9% .9 of the people in the three worlds are inter uninterested in liberation or spiritual ed education. Only the devotees of the Lord, headed by such great personalities, as Prahlad Maharaj and Narod Muni are interested in the real education of spiritual life. One cannot understand the principles of religion while staying on the material platform. Therefore, one must follow these great personalities. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 3, Text 20, Sambur Narada Sambhu Kumara Kopila Monu, Dallada Janaka Bhishma, Bali Bhaya Shaikir Bayam. One must follow in the footsteps of such great personalities as Lord Brahma, Narada, Lord Shiva, Kopila, Monu, the Kumaras, Prahlad Maharaj, Bhishma, Janaka Bali Maharaj, Shukdev Goswami, and Jamraj. Those interested in spiritual life should follow Prahlad Maharaj in rejecting the education of religion, economic development, and sense gratification. One should be interested in spiritual education. Therefore, the Krishna Consciousness Movement is spreading all over the world, following in the footsteps of Prahlad Maharaj, who did not like any of the materialistic education he received from his teachers. Hare Krishna. So here Srila Prabhupada is explaining uh, that the materialistic education composed of three mainly economic development, religion, and the stamp gratification. And Prahlad Maharaj, he didn't like those instructions because he was in constitutional situation from the very beginning. Uh, because he heard from a bona fide spiritual teacher Narad Muni. And Prabhupada is saying in the translation that those material in, uh, education involve one in the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease. And Prabhupada is saying here 99.999% 9 .9 people in these three worlds uninterested in liberation of spiritual education. And Basically, I can say for myself, before coming to Srila Prabhupada's uh, books and his devotees and grand devotees uh, association, that spiritual, the basic of the spiritual education, like soul and uh, the eternal position of the soul, didn't come, didn't come to my mind even though practicing uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra or Krishna Consciousness back to that. I will say, uh, before coming to even in this Bhagavatam group, uh, I learned, I heard from, uh, but after coming to the, listening to this Bhagavatam group, it became more substantiated. That, that Shri Prabhu was always telling that that, uh, that one plus one is two, if we start with one plus one is three, then everything. And we can see that, that because the education was not given, except it's gone. None other, uh, even religious uh, uh, institutions are talking about that, uh, the soul. So what is happening, oh, everything, everything is uh, revolved around the body. And everything when we ball around the body, the dualities come. Uh, uh, but as we can see, if we take that as 
in the previous verse uh, in Mother Jewish reading, Mahaprabhu that Jivara Swarupa is Krishna and Tadash. So when this, we establish that we are the soul, and then we are the spiritual entity, and, and our relationship with God is we are the servant, then so many things mitigate our sense, enjoyment, uh, anger, or the uh, desire to find something, or desire to have sense, to you were saying, with Sahara Prayash, those things go down because we know that we are servant and our main duty is to do this service. As Prabhuji was mentioning that uh, there was that question about how to use our occupational duty. So recently I just saw one quote by His Holiness Jayapataka Maharaj. One of his disciples asked him a question that Prabhupada stated that 50% of the income needs to go to the uh, devotional service temple. So that devotee asked Maharaj that, Maharaj, how it is possible? Like, after giving tax and everything, if we give 50%, there is nothing limited. Maharaj will answer nicely. He said, the Prabhupada is mentioning that you have to use uh, your money for the service of Krishna. You can do that in the house, you can do that in the temple. And uh, Maharaj was saying that you offer your food, you offer everything uh, to Krishna, and then uh, doing that, uh, you are doing the service. And then if you have little, uh, uh, then you give it to, uh, uh, for the uh, temple, for book distribution, or whatever way you want to use. And same I also heard from uh, Solinda's book teacher, Maharaj, recently in, uh, last year in, in Mayapur. Uh, he was telling that one devotee asked the same question. And Maharaj was answering the same question. So we can see that um, uh, they are guiding us, actually, uh, uh, how to uh, be spi uh, involved in our spiritual activities. Even if we work, uh, as Prabhuji was saying, that we earn money, we, we don't use that for our own sense gratification. Uh, we use center is the Krishna. So if we teach our children like center is the Krishna and whatever we do, we do it for Krishna's service, even at home. Even at home, if we get a new cloth, we can offer it to Krishna and say, uh, please allow me to use that cloth. And definitely we offer every food and everything for Krishna's service. Uh, that's my understanding to Hare Krishna. This, in this verse, there is also nice, I was the 12th Mahajan, but nicely mentioned here. So, go back to you, please, Edward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shubha. You're following everything you're speaking. That's really exemplary. So, Prahlad Maharaj, very, very, although he was submissive and humble, but he did not take it in his heart. So this is a very nice example that sometimes we may be in opposite association or bad association externally. But the main thing is that he didn't take it inside. He did not like that. So sometimes, you know, due to an office or association does not just mean physical proximity. Sometimes we could be in a flight and the person sitting next to us could be a hardcore atheist. If we start taking in their value system or taking in their their uh, words or consciousness then it is we are taking association or bad association but here Prahlad Maharaj didn't take that although he was very very close we didn't hear any you know devotees in that whole environment after you know Prahlad Maharaj's you know birth all he heard was before his strong bhakti had already developed later he was he had the clear cut, you know, power to discern what is good and what is not good. Even though it is my teacher, even though it is my father. So sometimes even a child goes to material education. Uh, and the, the school, the t teacher may say, oh God, there is no God. It could happen potentially. These days, they don't even touch the topic of God in the school on the name of secularism. Or some other students could say, they are 
you know, God is this, God is that. And, and But if the spiritual education by the mother, by the father, by the spiritual master is very, very strong, then the so-called outside forces will not be able to shake that person. Like Prahlad Maharaj. And which is very much required, actually. Otherwise, innocent children, uh, they have a strong proclivity to accept things. They are like a you know, absorbing sponge. They just absorb very fast. So the more we saturate their ability to absorb with Krishna consciousness, the more they will be full with Krishna consciousness. The less there will be room for anything negative to come. But the more if we give, you know, phones, games and this and that and useless TV shows and stuff, then already a lot of crap has gone in. Therefore, that was the main reason Her Grace Urmila Mataji said, till five years, nothing material should be, is required. Nothing is required actually. They're not going for jobs, they're not going for businesses. What is the need? Again, uh, this is... You know, her understanding, which I feel I totally agree. Like some may have a different opinion. That's totally everyone's free will. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, one last verse and we'll stop. Would someone like to read? I can read Prabhupada. Please. Yeah, text 54. Yada Charya Para Ruto Vayase Badaka Badaka Statra Sopahutam Krutakshane. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace in the field of the Swami Shila Prabhupada. When the teacher went home to attend to their household affairs, the students of the same age as Prahlad Maharaja would call him to take the opportunity of a leisure hours for play. Papa, in tiffin hours, the hours when the teachers were absent from the classroom, the students called Prahlad Maharaja, wanting to play with him, as will be seen from the following verses. However, Prahlad Maharaja was not very much interested in playing. Instead, he wanted to utilize every moment for advancing in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, as indicated in this verse by the word Krutakshena, at the opportune moment when it was possible to preach about Krishna consciousness, Prahlad Maharaja used the time as follows. So here the continuation, see the interest of Prahlad Maharajas. He, he did not wanted to waste any time into learning the material stuff and continuing his consci consciousness and focusing on the uh, Supreme Lord. Uh, that's what the, his identity uh, of Prahlad Maharaja. And here, uh, the most important thing is, uh, many times uh, we also uh, spend our time just doing materially mundane activity or doing anything. But uh, Prabhupada Ji has been mentioning here, we should be anikshan, kritikshan. Uh, you should take that opportunity and possibly learn ourselves, uh, to know ourselves about the Krishna consciousness. And Shubham Das Prabhu already said one time, many people take a break for a cigarette for 10 minutes in the work also. And we should definitely do that 10 minute break to learn something Krishna consciousness. Uh, he mentioned previously in, his, uh, uh, in the Bhagavatam teaching. So that uh, is kind of remembers me that he's saying that. So anytime we wasted, we should be think about that. Krishna and not to be getting into this mundane activity. That's what this verse is telling. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhu, back to you. Thank you. Thank you Prabhu for reminding that.
because it's not that I said, I just hear and just pass it on. It's, so I heard from some senior Vaishnava, which is so true. Therefore, uh, you know, we have to become like thieves. How can we steal time? Every moment, as he is mentioning, he wanted to utilize every moment for advancing in Krishna consciousness. And that means we should have a strict schedule. Okay, this time I will get up, this time to this time I will do this, then I will do this, then I will read Bhagavatam, then I will do my office work, then I will do spend time with my children and help them with the homework, then I will do Aarti, then I will do Kirtan, then I will cook for Krishna, this. There should be, one should balance, when time for health, time for cooking, time for family, time for work, time for bhakti, time for reading, hearing, so that there is no idle time. Idle time is devil's workshop, actually. Idle mind is devil's workshop. So idle time, idle mind. And especially now, actually, when we are not, you know, going out or hardly going out, so pretty much the temple or temple services are stopped, the physical meeting of devotees is stopped. So this time, what we are truly doing is a test, actually. What are we doing in the four walls of our house is a test this time. Because no one, you know, what is only will also guide the way we want reciprocation. No one is coming to watch what time I'm sleeping, what I'm doing, what TV I'm watching, or, you know, I'm free, so-called free. So, very, very important to use the time in the right the right things and we already know he had no interest in playing we read that before balastavat krida sakta all the children are asakta in krida tarunastavat taruni sakta the young boy is interested in young girls and vice versa vriddhastavat chinta sakta vriddha people old people worrying now everyone is worrying because of this corona so much anxiety and Parabrahmani Kopina Sakta. No one is interested in the Parabrahman, the Supreme Lord Krishna. That should be the real uh, matter. We spend our time and energy. So, even at work, there are so many opportunities. You know, when senior devotee said, no one works actually for all eight hours, nine hours, we are there. One will go insane, he said. One, one cannot work. Even the CEO, the VP, the general manager, whatever the big, big roles, they also don't work for eight hours. So I see in my office so many people, like some people, they go for like five, six times to smoke cigarette and every time they go out, they're like at least five, ten minutes out. So just imagine like six times, times six, ten minutes, sixty minutes gone. No one really questions. So I'm not saying we do that, but we can apply that principle um, of course, we do our work nicely, so no one questions. So, but taking taking break and using it for Krishna, as Prahlad Maharaj did, he used it for preaching. And we learned preaching is very very important. Attack is the best defense. So, if we feel oh, I don't have any association, then try to build that association. Try to build that. Prahlad Maharaj is showing that. He didn't have any physical association of devotees. In fact, his gurus were teaching him the, the wrong thing, the so-called gurus. But he tried to bring that. And in the text 52, an interesting word is used that they unceasingly taught Prahlad Maharaj. That means you were always kind of, you know, behind him. But any little chance he got, when the teachers went home, any little chance, little opportunity he got, everyone was using for leisure, let's enjoy. But Prahlad, we'll see that later more, but Prabhupada is mentioning in the purport, he used to preach, which will come more, and so we'll discuss more maybe tomorrow. But uh, how using our time and using any opportunity in the right cause is very, very important. And I'm speaking for myself. Because mind is very, very chanchal. As Arjuna says in text 634 of Bhagavad Gita, chanchalam hi mana krishna. And he's very dhrida, pramathi. 
balavad dridavad so therefore we try to use it and by nicely engaging it for spiritual subjects any closing comments or questions okay we will stop here and continue tomorrow and see how lad maharaj did the preaching गंतराज श्रीमद भागवत की जय श्री प्रभुपाद की जय श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की जय ऑल मदर्स की जय पंचाकल्पत रूप कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः थैंक यू सो मच हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण